My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm the owner of the Outside Digital Art and Design. Um, Matt Cedarberg usually runs these today, but he uh, recently had a baby, so he's out. Uh, he's out being a being a good daddy. So uh, he asked me to step in. Happy to do so. Happy to be here. Um, Kevin Pasco is with us today, uh, the owner of Crop Circle Design, and he's going to get into a little bit different workflow on the reverse engineering tools uh, that Skype that Sky uh, got started with this last last uh, webinar. And uh, and he's going to take us through um, the design and construction of of uh, a potential shoe workflow. Um, the next slide. Um, like I said, Kevin's the owner of Crop Circle Design. He's in uh, Southern California, and um, the webinar agenda today, we're going to show how to apply some T-spline surfaces to a scanned mesh. We're going to go from an unorganized, uh, triangulated polygon mesh. Uh, we're going to model some T-spline forms on it using the new reverse engineering tools, and uh, we're going to end up with a, with a watertight NURBS result. Um, we're using T-spline's 3.3 beta, which is available on the web. Uh, we're also using Rhino 5 beta. Um, there's some ongoing, um, shall we say, unintended functions of, of Rhino 5 Beta uh, just yet with T-splines, but we're going to work through those. It works great with, with 4, but 5's got 32-bit, some, some other things like that, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and use 5. So uh, bear with us if we have any technical issues. We're using two Betas on top of each other, and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll uh, that will work out just fine. Um, some housekeeping rules. The attendees are all muted. Uh, please use the chat box liberally. We have uh, uh, Joe Rigby and Joe uh, and uh, Juan Santacono online with us as well, so they'll be answering questions. Um, that's one of the things that we really like about these webinars, to have them be very interactive, and uh, one of the benefits of, of coming to these live as opposed to watching them on the web. Um, if you see something that Kevin's doing that you have a question on, uh, feel free to put it in the in the chat box, and if it's something that is appropriate to address at the time, we'll we can even break in and have Kevin address that uh, live on the screen. Um, if you're a if you're a Twitter person, we are uh, at tsplines or hashtag tsplines. Feel free to tweet us, and the webinar will be recorded and posted on YouTube um, after we edit out uh, everything. So um, that's it. I think. Uh, uh, a little bit more about Kevin. He's got 15 years of product design experience. He worked in the fashion industry, the toy industry, and the video game industry. Um, he's an expert Rhino ZBrush and T-Splines user. Um, Kevin and I have been working together um, for probably close to 15 or 20 years now, and um, he and I have uh, kind of a loose partnership based in the fact that I help him out. I help him out when he's busy, and he helps me out when I'm busy, and and uh, uh, has been uh, an extraordinarily wonderful person to work with. And uh, I think you guys will all benefit from, uh, from getting to watch him work here. So um, thanks for coming. The, the, some purchase options. Um, T-Splines is available at, at tsplines.com backslash store. 3.3 uh, is a free upgrade if you have T-Splines V3. And we'd like you to download the 3.3 beta at tsplines.com forum. Give it a shot and give us some feedback as to what you think uh, you'd, like to, you'd like to see additionally developed. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to Kevin and let him get rolling. And, uh, and we'll, we'll just start the show here. Show my screen. Am I on? Yep, you're live. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to mute myself, Kevin, so uh I'm not uh disturbing you, so take it away. All right, just pop. Okay. Um T-splines is an amazingly flexible tool and allows you to get in and establish geometry and volumes. Um, in a nerves-based environment that um, 
with a, a sub D workflow, which is really quick. And you can establish forms a lot faster with the T-splines uh, workflow that I'm going to show you a lot faster than you can traditionally with NURBS. Um, the NURBS workflow is um, primarily based on establishing a wireframe and uh, building patches and trimming surfaces inside that wireframe. And um, there's a really unique um, way to work inside of uh, T-splines that um, is very similar to uh, how I used to work in uh, Studio Max with uh, low poly poly modeling. So here I'm just going to hide this real quick and I'm going to show you a couple um, ways to establish uh, geometry. Uh, one is a very simple primitives uh, starting point and um, let's see so this is this is basically a poly box and when you run the smooth mode it turns this into uh, TS shiny an airtight, watertight um, manifold that, let's see if I can uh, get in zebra here. So this is a, an amazingly smooth, airtight, watertight object that converts into NURBS with a button click. And now we've got a NURBS object that we can run all our Rhino tools on. Let's detach this. So we can use the primitives. Build with primitives. We can also use a tool called append face. And let me turn off. I've got a let me tap the snap on there. So I just drew a quad, and I can I can create new geometry by selecting elements like an edge and holding the option key and dragging it to create new geometry. So I didn't just scale that, I created four more quads. Now I can take this and I can thicken it and I can numerically enter a thickness or I can arbitrarily drag that. And again, if I smooth this, this is the, the low poly sub D representation of that geometry that I just created. And it's all real time updatable. So when you start working in this mode, you start to get really sculptural. I can also create geometry by just selecting and dragging faces or quads. And again, this is uh, familiar to a lot of you that are that have been using T-splines, but um, this is my primary workflow. I, I draw with quads, and then I either thicken or extrude.
to create my volumes. And that's going to lead me into how I'm going to, the, the next step, which is a new tool to T-splines, which is using the append face and I'm just going to draw a quad in the top view so now I've got a T-splines face and you can see here in the HUD it shows as a T-splines object now I can thicken this to create my geometry. But what we've got here is we've got a, um, a low poly result of a scan of a shoe last. And there's not much I can do with this as a NURBS object, as a poly model. So I'm going to use T-splines to rebuild this poly model and have a T-splines object that's highly sculptural and I can also convert it into a, uh, a button click direct result NURBS object if I want to use Rhino or engineering tools. So what I'm going to show you now is this, this new snap topology tool and I'm going to come up to the, uh, the HUD and it looks like I can't see it with net meeting on, so I'll type in retopology. I'm going to turn snap on. I'm going to turn world uh, orientation on. And I'm going to set an offset so we can see how this is adhering to the form. So I'm going to OK that. And when I move this onto the onto the um, the model, it snaps. It snaps to the surface. So that's one way of snapping, and uh, and starting to build. And you can see that there's a a, a numerically entered offset. I can change that offset. And when I nudge or move, it updates the snap. Now you can see I've got a, a 0.05 offset here and a 0.1 offset. I'm going to go back to this 0.05 offset. And again, I nudge it, and it snaps it back to that 0.05 offset. So I can also append right on this, this object. So I drew this right on the surface. Let me lock this. So the good thing is that it, um, the snap continues to operate on, a, on locked objects. Now, once this is laid down, I can move this around and it will continually follow the snap constraints. Let's get rid of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skin this this poly object by grabbing faces, 
holding the alt button and dragging and that automatically <clears throat> continues the snap constraint with the 0.05 offset. Now you can see where there's some collision where the points, the vertices, are offset, but there's not enough definition in the T-splines object to adhere to that curvature. So depending on your accuracy needs, you can add more detail to your model, if I use the um, the insert edge tool, see when I insert those edges it automatically snaps. If I have snap enabled, it will continue to update that. So as you draw your shape, you can start thinking about topology and how you want your, your flow to adhere to your, your curvature of your form while using as little data with as little input as possible. We'll use a couple extra subdivisions to make that tight curve. Not much contour here, so I'll go a little bit bigger. getting a little off track. And look at the flexibility here. The flexibility is amazing to be able to slide this around on the surface with snap. Just want to finish this loop real quick. Before I show you how you can literally pull this surface around this form like a sock. I'm going to weld these verts. Lost our smooth because we had an unresolved open edge. All right, now this is down and dirty webinar mode. So it's a little sloppy at this point. Now I'm going to take this edge loop and I'm just going to drag the whole thing. Now sometimes it's really forgiving. It's snapping to the, the outermost to the viewport surface. So it snapped the bottom up to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the top half of this and just drag it along. So there's a little repair required here. No problem, just slide it around on the surface. I'm going to take these, drag them out, 
And if you ever have a question that something's not snapped, just grab it and nudge it a little bit. And it'll snap back into uh, compliance. See how that's blowing through? You can constantly update and see where you're going to capture these curves the best. We'll grab these. Weld these to keep this continuous. Now these are pretty far out, but it's still easy to recover. Okay, so we're starting to see how this is going to take place. Again, you need more definition. Let's turn both sides on. Slide these around to where they need to be. And it looks like it's not the wrap that I'm losing, but this contour that needs more definition. You see, as you add definition, it automatically updates to whatever your snap constraint is. Now, depending on what your, your tolerance requirement is, you can load up this geometry with lots of definition. I'm going to um, subdivide faces here. And I might be losing snap here. So see I just grabbed all of these as I was, I see that I'm, as I was adding definition, one of the conditions that I was presenting was not updating snap. So again, if you're in doubt, just grab it and nudge it. And you'll get your snap. All right, I'm not going to get too far out into the weeds here with this. I'm going to get rid of this whole thing. And where are my layers? I'm going to show you the end result of a last that I, I just carried this process out to the end. Now, here's where you've got a lot of flexibility with giving your artist control over the last. And um, starting to sculpt on this, depending on if you've got a running shoe or a boot, you don't have to continue to, oops, I had snap on. An artist can go in and uh, Use soft manipulate and start sculpting on this. Do different sizes. You can launch off your original last form and tune it.
And again, being here in T-splines, you're a button push away. So we can check up here in our heads up display in T-splines. It'll tell you what you've got selected. This is T-splines mesh. And we can button click this. Now it's poly surfaces. Now we can use all our favorite Rhino tools. Don't prove me wrong. Now we've got our nerves objects. We can shell this. We can put expansion sections. Okay, that is the last construction. Let's see, we've got a. Uh, where is TS Shiny is not cooperating. Um, with us here. Let's, uh, just show the T-splines result. Bring that back to T-splines and you've got all your T-splines tools. Okay, so let me hide And in the last, we'll hide the, uh, the poly scan. <clears throat> and where is my drawing? I hide that on a freaky layer. Let's bring it in again. Bring a picture frame. Bring in this uh, shoe drawing done by my great friend and amazing, talented uh, footwear designer, graphic designer extraordinaire, uh, AJ Dia. To this drawing for me. Let's go to ghosted view and start positioning our drawing around the last. And I want to start creating these panels for the uh, the upper. So again, there's a couple different ways I can go about it. I can grab the polys. Oh, let's lock this. I can grab these polys. I can detach this. So I've got a separate piece here. And then I can thicken this. Where are you thickening? And I can thicken it numerically. I can thicken it numerically. I can thicken it uh, arbitrarily by dra by dragging. Uh, let's. And I apologize if this isn't very technical. This is just the way I work. I, I'm I'm. The tools are so flexible that they, they allow an artist to use a, an organic workflow. There's no one way to do this. There's no singular way to do this. It's a really open-ended workflow. So if I hit thicken, those again that aren't familiar with, with T-splines, you get a nice radius, a nice rounded edge with thicken. 
and that is an option. You can also click the uh, hit the um, the creased edge option, and it will run a straight crease. Again, this is a solid, airtight, watertight manifold object. So we don't want to represent that thick. Let's give it 0.02. All right, so whether that's Nubuck or whether this is going to represent an, a pattern for an injection molded piece, um, I can take this and I can Boolean out a piece. Let's call this, convert that into uh, a poly surface and trim this off. Again, we'll, let's see if I can find this. I work primarily in five and I'm lost in Rhino 4. It's been so long since I've been in Rhino 4. So I'm kind of hunt, hunting and pecking with the old interface. So let's get rid of this. And I'll bring in our last and our toe piece. So that's going to wrap about that far before it gets uh, glued or fixed to our slip last. And then I um, created this piece, which is this overlay here. So the first piece was built for this panel. And then I offset this to give the thickness to build this panel right here. And again, I did this with the append face. Why did I lose? What did I lose here? Let's lock this. And end face. Ah, we're not top of snapped. Nudge it to snap. Nudge it to snap. Come into my side view. Find where this needs to start. And if you notice, I was using the topo snap on a uh, on a poly mesh before, and here I am using our T splines last to snap over. So the, this process works over poly surfaces, um, uh, meshes, T splines objects. If there's anything else, um, any other types of geometry that this works on. Uh, I hope somebody fills that gap for me. So again, I slip this like a sock. Over, over the last again. to create these panels.
So let's get rid of this. So here are parts. We've got some Z fighting because these are very, very thin pieces. Um, let's open some of these up. Our heel piece, these are all made the same way. Have them trimmed. Let's see, we've got our, our slip last. Turn this off. Turn. Our slip last was just created by selecting these quads and detaching them and thickening them. And then we get into our midsole. Now to create the midsole, let me lock all this stuff. Let's get down here. All this. Get some extra stuff on that layer. Inside this. You never see the inside of our shoe. And again, since these are now poly surfaces, we can go in and um, fill up these and put lace laces in them, whatever we need to do. There's my heel. All right, so to create this outsole, I basically started with a cube. Let's go into the top view. And I just mush this around like a piece of clay. wireframe. And I typically start rough, very little geometry, and back into it. And add geometry and detail as needed. Let's see, we've got that heel piece. Points back. My keys. There we go. There we go.
Now this goes pretty quickly, you know, for the sake of the webinar. We won't spend too much time. This is just to show you the workflow of what is possible here and how simple and quickly it can be or it is to establish geometry. Let's bring this down. Screw this up. Start getting a little bit of crispness here. And then start sculpting the shoe or the midsole. Now, this is where you can spend an an inexorbitant amount of time with the sculptural capabilities of ZBrush, or of T-Splines, sorry. <laughs> um, where you start organic modeling. Let's grab this. Stinking hot keys. Hold all key. Extrude. Putting in airbags. So let me undo all that real quick and show you how I started to fit this to the last. So this isn't going to come out perfect because there's a lot of adjusting that I needed to do to make this edge loop properly. Not a lot. I just had to weld some, some verts there. So I'm going to create those. I'm going to create my cup. And give it as much geometry as I need to make that cup work. Um, if need be, I can add extra edge loops to tighten up this radius. Or I can use the crease tool it doesn't give a natural result but if you're with what you're looking for is a, a razor edge parting line <clears throat> the um, the crease tool can be very handy now I'm going to bring back the, the last. I 
We'll hide everything else. All oh, the stuff that's locked doesn't get hidden. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, move it up in the proximity, and I'm going to detach this, this edge loop. I'm going to detach this edge, unweld edge, and I'm going to hide the outside of this. So I can see up into this intersection. And we'll lock this so I can get isolate just the um, the verts that I want. So I just locked off this so T splines only shows me the available verts. And retapo snap on and just start going around and nudging. Now this is just the workflow. You can take these I mean, you'll go more into detail, obviously, with your own work. But I just want to show you how you can start to create this midsole part. And again, as you work, you can add geometry to adhere to that contour better. This will snap all the way into the arch. Snap just below it. Another thing that helps is using the ghosted view. So you can see into where you want that to hit. Something way out here in space. Start adjusting your topology. Get your flow going. Straighten stuff out. And then wrap this all the way around. And just work along your shoe. Work along your last. Let's go on this one here. Let me just chase this one in here. And then what I'm going to show you is I'm going to bring back the, um, the hidden part of this shoe, the hidden part of this uh, midsole. And then I'm going to just start welding this up. Bring this back in here. I can use the bridge command, um, 
these I didn't move, so I can just grab those and weld them all at once. And you see as I'm resolving these seams, it's starting to smooth for us. It's going smooth. This was way out. Just push it in. Oh. Let's turn snap off. There's something else in here. Well, that's my proper result. We had that. Again, we stitch this all the way up. Start moving this in. Now, if we bring back the last and we want to track the belt line, we can use the snap and drag this around and it'll continue to hold our cup. And then we can start sculpting our belt line. And again, the last is just a starting point depending on your um, your constraint requirements. You can just jump back off of this and freely sculpt. So I'll show you the results. So here's the basis for the cup last. It seems I'm missing a part. Let's jump over to here. Kevin, we're running up on the hour. Um, you may want to start heading to the finish line and um, and then uh, go ahead and take some questions if there's anything that anybody wants to uh, wants to jump in on or see demoed or that you missed. Um, Go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump in on that now. Okay. Let's just uh, the finish line is really the basis for the outsole. Where you're really going to get the most benefit with T splines is the outsole sculpting and um, any molded pieces in the uh, the upper. Add geometry. You can create the cavities for your airbags. Um, I did this by basically using the bridge command through the midsole. Uh, where you got the bridge command. Bridge command's nice for punching holes. And um, are there any other questions or any questions? There's one question about how you turned on and off the uh, retopo snaps. Turning on and off the retopo snap is either done in the, the HUD uh, by clicking it or typing in. Uh, retopo, snap, yes, switch to yes. I use world. I find the arbitrary way that I sculpt uh, world uh, works better than view, even though it seems like it's a view result. Um, so the, the, the options I use the most are the offset and the snap.
And there, there was another question in there about the retopology re options dialog. Is, is there one? And if so, where is it? Uh, that's the options dialog where um, you type in retopo. Uh, I, you might be able to type in TS uh, retopology, but um, when I type in um, retopo, I get this prompt line. Um, let me see. They're, sh they're probably, I've only, this, this tool is so new. I've had this tool available for a little over a week. Um, I'm sure there's a, um, a retopo in the, here we go, retopo snap options. Yeah, it just brings up the same command line where you get the offset the type of snap, and toggling it on and off. Juan says there's an icon on the modifier toolbar. An icon. You know what? I haven't seen that. Oh, here it is. I, I, I don't think it showed up in 5, but here it's it is right Juan's, here. That's because Juan's been keeping it secret. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if we could all just be one. Be one. <laughs> Wouldn't life be so much better? Okay. Any of you guys who don't know Juan Sonokomo, he's Sonokono. He's our he's our resident T splines ninja, and uh, he lives in Argentina. We're very fortunate to be working with him. Kevin, there's another question in here. Is retopo on or off of the entire body, and can individual verts or, or or edges be turned on or off? Can you can you retopo just a particular vert here and there, or does it have to be for the whole object? No, it's it's very very forgiving. Um, I'll just do it as quickly as I can. I'm going to turn retopo on. Is it on? And I'll drag one edge. That didn't work. Yes. Sorry, guys. No, am I not? There we go. Okay, so here it's all snapped on. All the components are constraining. So I can pull these off by just toggling the retopo control on and off. Just pull these off. I can set this to a different, I can turn, I can toggle topo snap back on, select this give this a different offset. Grab another one. Now this, these two verts share a different offset from these. So here I've got a number of different components of the same mesh. This is freely out in space. Re-enable it. These will pop out to the new offset input. So there you go. And um, this also works for edges. You can snap edges. You can snap whole faces. This is a, uh, the top offset. I'll go back to 0 0.05. And there it snaps the whole face. But it leaves alone what's not selected.
Can we toggle snap off? Can I do it? Can I do it? Well, Kevin, we're at about ten after now, so why don't we um, why don't we wrap up with any last questions and uh, and we'll let everybody get on with their day, uh, including you, because rumor has it you've got a job that you're working on. <laughs> I got some web surfing to do. See, here's One an more. example of a of a thickness a volume that I um, snap the interior to. And um, let go. I snapped the interior to, I thickened it, turned off the retopo snap, and just pulled out the outer verts to pull it out. Questions? Any other questions? Looks like uh, looks like you did a great job explaining it. I think we're all set. Is everybody still awake? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my voice is uh, a weapon. Uh, one request to see the finished model. Oh, I've blown it up so much along the way. Uh, let's see. I can get back to it. Hid. Get tweaked out a little bit. Um. Heel piece. This stuff moved around a little bit. And again, I wouldn't, unless you're going for like an Oakley, really organic uh, lug pattern. If you're going for a mechanical lug pattern, the tool set to stay within for that would be going back into the Rhino tools to convert this into a uh, a poly mesh and start booleaning and cutting and s plopping and flow along surface your your lug patterns. Excellent. Well, thanks, Kevin. Um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up now and. Uh, if there's any last second questions, go ahead and throw them in there. Um, we will go ahead and wrap up with um, with just some the housekeeping stuff that we talked about before. You can purchase Rhino, uh, purchase T-splines for Rhino at tsplines.com backslash store. Again, a reminder, the 3.3 upgrade is free if you have T-splines V3. Uh, you can download the 3.3 beta at tsplines.com forum. And if you have questions, you can email info at tsplines.com or call us at 801-841-1234.